Hi, Rod Hember here with Ask the Pastor. <clears throat> I, uh, I wanted to focus on this because it's important. And one of the questions that I'll be answering is, uh, Linda says, I was listening today to the Bible discovery and I thought there were certain conditions where divorce was okay. But let me just say, Linda, that uh, in my view, uh, the Bible presents a case that divorce is never okay. Uh, however, there are conditions surrounding divorce that are very interesting. Now, to illustrate this, I'm going to take you to Mark chapter 10. And it says, Then Jesus left Capernaum and went down to the region of Judea into an area east of the Jordan River. Once again, crowds gathered around him. And as usual, he was teaching them. So this was a normal, usual thing for Jesus to do. But there were some Pharisees that came and tried to trap him with this question. Should a man be allowed to divorce his wife? That's the question they ask him. Well, Jesus, this is the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God. Jesus answered them with a question. What did Moses say in the law about divorce? Well, they replied, and they uh, said he permitted it. And he said man can give his wife written notice of divorce and send her away. I find that fascinating because that's important for us to remember what the law said. The law was very important in Moses responding to the people. But Jesus responded. This is back to when Jesus was teaching. He responded. And he wrote this commandment, only as a concession to your hard hearts. He wrote that, Moses did. But God made them, male and female, two genders. There's two genders, male and female. Two sexes, male and female, not genders, sexes. Because gender is an invention of man. From the beginning of creation, two, male and female. And this explains why man leaves his father and his mother and is joined to his wife, and the two of them are united into one, since they are no longer two, but one. Let no one, words of Jesus, let no one split apart what God has joined together. Later, when he was alone with his disciples in the house, they brought up the subject again, and he told them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery against her. And if a woman divorces her husband and marries someone else, she commits adultery. Mark chapter 10, verses 1 through 12. Now that's one place where Jesus Christ talks about this. If you want more information on marriage, you can go then to Paul. Paul the Apostle talks to the church at Corinth, and he says something interesting. He's giving instructions, avoiding lawsuits for Christians and all of that. But here's his instructions. In chapter 7 of 1 Corinthians, it says, Now regarding the question you ask about in your letter, yes, it is good to abstain from sexual relations. But because there is so much sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife, each man should have his own wife, and each woman should have her own husband. The husband should fulfill the wife's sexual needs. And the wife should fulfill the husband's sexual needs. The wife gives authority over her body to her husband. And the husband gives authority over his body to his wife. We often hear today, well, it's my body, I can do what I want to with it. Well, if you're a Christian, if you believe in what God said and what Paul's speaking about, no, it's not. It belongs to Jesus Christ. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And he says you need to pay attention to the people you're married to. goes on here. This is really, really interesting. Verse 5. Do not deprive each other of sexual relationships uh, in your marriage. 
unless you both agree to refrain from sexual intimacy for a limited time so you can give yourself more complexity to prayer afterwards. You should continue and you should, you should continue together and come together again so that Satan will not be able to tempt you because of your lack of self-control. Lack of self-control. I find that interesting. I say this as a concession, not as a command, but I wish everyone were single as I am. Each person has a special gift from God of one kind or another. So I say to those who aren't married and to widows, it is better to stay unmarried just as I am. But if they cannot control themselves, if they cannot control themselves, they should go ahead and marry. It's very important to hear. It is better to marry than it is to burn. Verse 10. But for those who are married, I have a command that comes not from me, but from the Lord. A wife must not leave her husband. But if she does leave him, let her remain single or else be reconciled to him. And the husband must not leave his wife. Now, I will speak to the rest of you, though I do not have the direct command from the Lord, if a fellow believer has a wife who is not a believer, and she is willing to continue living with him, he must not leave her. Don't do it. And if a believing woman has a husband who is not a believer and he is willing to continue living with her, she must not leave him. Hmm, that's interesting. For the believing wife brings holiness to her marriage and the believing husband brings holiness to, her, to his marriage. Otherwise, your children would not be holy. But now they are holy. But if the husband of the wife who is not a believer insists on leaving, let them go. In such cases, believe the believing husband or wife is no longer bound to the other, for God has called you to live in peace. Don't you have or don't you wives realize that your husbands might be, be saved simply because you are? And don't you husbands realize that your wives may be saved because of you? Now, let me remind you that in Genesis chapter 2, this is very important what God said, and that'll be the end of my answer for this. But God had made man and woman specifically for each other. Now, you remember the story in chapter 2 of Genesis, and it talks about the man being naming the animals, and uh, verse 15 says, And the Lord God placed the man in the Garden of Eden to tend and watch over it. But the Lord was war or the Lord warned him, You may not freely eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evils. Stay away from that tree. If you eat it, you are surely to die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. It's not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So the Lord God formed from the ground all the wild animals and the birds of the sky, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them, and the man chose names for each one. I wonder what they were. Interesting, isn't it? He gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the sky and to the wild animals, but still there was no helper just right for him. So the Lord God caused man to fall asleep into a deep sleep. He was the first... God who did surgery. While the man slept, the Lord God took one out of one man's, uh, took one of the man's ribs out and closed up the opening. And the Lord God made woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed when he saw the woman, this one is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. So she will be called woman because she was taken. Now, keep this in mind. Divorce is not okay. Never is, never will be. But there are conditions that God deals with. And we have to be careful that we don't look for reasons to divorce. 
but we understand that God is doing something. And we have to realize that our marriages are not about us. Our marriages are the image of God. They, God uses our marriages to display his image. So that's how I'd answer that. It's not okay. But this is the reality of uh, what the situation is. That's my answer on that one. And you can check that out in Mark 10 and 1 Corinthians 7. Uh, they have some good places for that in the Bible. All right. 